Hello lockdown listeners and welcome to episode 90 of the Agile podcast. Still a remote Agile podcast as it stands, I'm afraid. So me and Jeff gathered in our homes, opened a collective drink and uh, had a chat last night uh, about what was going on for us at the moment during this lockdown, these lockdown times. For me, it was a chance to prepare and I talked a bit about the, the idea of hitting the flow uh, yesterday when I was actually pretty busy um, immersed in one particular task and Jeff was prepping for a workshop based on feedback. So we had quite a lengthy discussion about giving and receiving feedback and how uh, we adjust our behaviours based on those things. We hope you're well, uh, we hope you're keeping safe during these times and we really do hope uh, we'll be back in the pub for our 100th episode in 10 episodes time. So um, with, the, with that in mind, we'll get straight on with it. Let's play the jingle. Friend. <laughs> Hello again, Jeff. That's smooth. There's no no technical problems at all there, was there, on this uh, <laughs> This isn't. This is just the first time that we've dialed in tonight. We haven't had any technical issues at all. Just press play, isn't it? Just press play. Aerosmith. I've got three lockdown ciders left, mate. Oh. I'm wondering. I was uh, considering tonight whether it's a sign like this. We've got three podcasts, three remote podcasts left before we'll be back in the pub. Yeah. I can't doubt that, but you never know. Well. We can we can get together in groups of six, so we could we could uh, do it in a park. We could go yeah, go go drink in the local park and break a number of bylaws, I imagine. Park cast. Yeah, I've got number three. I've got number six, and I've I've got number ten. Three six ten. Hmm, I'm feeling like a three today. Three. Let's have a look. Oh, this is different because it's not a bottle opener. It's a screw top. Oh, interesting. Oh, this is a Bridge Farm Somerset Cider from East Chinook in Yeovil, Somerset. 6.5%. Is that anything to do with the Chinook helicopters? I don't know, actually. Maybe it is. Bridge Farm has been making award-winning artisan cider for more than 20 years. It's a very simple label. There's not a lot on it, but uh, I'll crack it open. It doesn't even, really, even give you much description about what it is. It just has a well-rounded cider. <laughs> well, you'll have to do the uh, description for them. <laughs> what with my? There's a bit of ice in there as well. So apologies for any cider connoisseurs. I'm drinking it with ice because it's very hot. Well, there we go. It's not particularly fizzy. I would, it's, I'd say, almost still. There was hardly any. I suppose it probably well, it would be with a screw top, but uh, yeah, a bit, a bit, a bit of a cloudy kind of residue. Tastes quite rough. A bit, <laughs> a bit badgery. <laughs> bit badgery. Yeah, but. Uh, <clears throat> A bit dirty, that one. Not dirty, but a bit earthy. Earthy is the word. Mm. My this face, if you can see, you can, obviously only you and our Patreon viewers can see my face, though, but I'm kind of wincing, got a wincing face. It's like the face you make when you've uh, licked, an, licked a battery. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still, I wouldn't say it's the most drinkable one of the, of the batch. No. I've got victory ale. Oh, yeah. I'm not really celebrating any victory in particular, but it's from Batemans, which apparently have been craft brewers since 1874. Oh. And uh, it's a bit a bit uh, sort of golden brown, ready brown. Texture like sun. Yeah. So... Lay me down with my mind she runs. You've got no idea what I'm talking about, have you? Yeah. <laughs> Text in, viewers, if you uh, know what Paul's talking about. Hashtag golden brown. Yeah, that's um, 
sort of a, a, a cool bitter, a little bit of that's right, a little bit of spice in there. Oh, but it's not chili or anything. Maybe I don't know. It's a bit of bit of seasoning, Some peppery, peppery, maybe, peppery. Yeah, maybe, 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 yeah. Um, a little bit fruity. Yeah, all right. That's me, actually, isn't it? A bit spicy, a bit fruity. <laughs> Uh, yes, very much so. Very much so. And how are you on this fine June evening? It is June now. It is, yeah. Happy days. Pinching a punch. Pinch yeah. A punch. I'm tired, actually. I'm tired. I haven't slept well the last couple of nights. It's hot. Yeah, very hot. So, yeah, uh, we are um, have a, having a, a rather long dry spell, which is great while you're at home because... You know, you can spend a lot of time outside, but you can't see anyone, so you spend a lot of time with yourself and your family outside. Well, we've gone from the wettest February on record to by far, I mean, by far broken all records by a long way, the sunniest May. Yeah. Uh, Complete extremes. As they say, Smith office, very un-British weather. Yeah, we live in strange times. We certainly do. I'll show a bit of belly there on the, on the camera. I'll, I'll push my chair into a little bit further. A bit extra for the uh, for the patient view. <laughs> Just one X, not three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, struggling with the old hay fever as well. It's fully kicked in for me now. Yeah, I can see your, your nose is looking a little bit red. You've been blowing it a lot, I guess. Yeah, you'll see. Um, and I apologise if you um, listeners, if you hear me snort and sniff a bit more than usual. Um, but no, I'm a bit bit bunged up and a bit uh, runny nosed. That's something I've always been grateful for not having hay fever. Yeah. Something I don't, I kind of don't realise how irritating it is. I forget how irritating it is until you, I have it. Mm. I only have it for maybe two, three weeks and it'll obviously the, that type of pollen that I'm allergic to will will pass and then um, I'll largely for the, for the remainder of the summer be fine. Mm. Cool. <sighs> So yeah, we've launched the new challenge. I suppose we should talk about yeah. that. Yeah, we don't want to give too much away, but we should let people know what's um, what we've been up to. Yeah. So um, for those of you that are subscribed to my YouTube channel, you may remember you may remember Paul featuring as one of the contestants in a little game show I put together. What would it have been? Two years ago? Probably two years ago, I think. I, I guess it, it might, but then it might be further than you think. It might be three, but I'd say two. Yeah, maybe a couple of years ago. Um, good fun. It was called uh, the Scrum Mastery Challenge. Set a few agile coaches and my daughter at the time. Well, she's still my daughter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Some, uh, that, uh, that, that we somehow managed to relate back to uh, a conversation about agile. Uh, so taking photographs and painting pictures and all sorts. So, yeah, I decided that we were going to resurrect that, Paul and I. And uh, we've got our new contestants. We've given them their first challenge. And next week's episode, we will be discussing their submissions. You looking forward to that? Yeah, it should be fun. Um, so we'll we'll play you back a few clips of what they did. Obviously, we'll describe the, the task in a lot more detail. But it um, should be fun. It gives us... Um, yeah, so don't want to go. We really, really, really want to tell people what it is, but really don't want to tell people what it is because um, I think that would maybe prove an advantage or a disadvantage to people who are actually doing that challenge. But there will again, that will all be revealed next week as to who the challenges are, Jeff. Yeah, but what we can tell you is, is a truly global challenge. It's a global challenge, yeah. And how many contestants are there, Jeff? Well, there's seven say, countries represented. Seven countries represented. Yes. So we've got. The US and Canada over there. <laughs> we got the UK. We've got Singapore, India, New Zealand, um, Germany. How many have I said? That's probably seven. Um, yeah. So it's like it's like our own version of the Olympics, Jeff. That's how that's how I'm looking at it. Mm. We couldn't have the Olympics this year. For obvious reasons, so this is our like scrum mastery agile version of the Olympics. Okay, hadn't thought of it like that, but that could work. You know, I'm not a big fan of the Olympics, though, don't you? 
I seem to remember you had you grumbling about it a few years, every four years. I can't remember <laughs> why. But there's just a lot of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Olympics really, and I won't go on a long time about this because it's not agile, but the uh, it should just be running, throwing and jumping. That's it. Well, that's what it used to be, isn't it? Exactly. The original the Olympics. Getting on a bike and having 20 different swimming competitions for each backstroke and what have you. Maybe a bit of wrestling for fun. Well, that was that was one of the original sports, wasn't it? Greco yeah. Roman wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Are you, are you going to get down off your high horse now? Is that is that it? Is that all you... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really. I did. Um... Oh, we've lost Paul. Paul left. Where did he go? What happened? Oh, I see. You, you disappeared. Gremlins. In the I'm back. Well done. Um, no, I read somewhere that um, something like uh, only 13 of the top 100 ever 100 meter race times have been run by somebody clean, and they've all been Usain Bolt or something like that. Like every other, apart from Usain Bolt, every other top sprint time has been associated with a drug cheat. Yeah. I do think that there was someone was saying they should have a dirty Olympics where you can take whatever you want and just 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 see if somebody can jump over a house or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did we get on? Oh yeah, that's my fault, wasn't it? I said the the uh, Scrum Master Olympics. My mm. fault. Yeah, so I think once when, once the contestants have finished their challenges, I think we'll open open that challenge up to to everybody else and see if they can do any better or if they're useful to them. You know, what I mean? might yeah. not be a bit of fun. It might be some some crazy logic behind these challenges. I certainly think the first challenge, um, which was largely your idea, was uh, a really good one because there's. There's, 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 a, there's a whole vagueness to it, which is part of the beauty of it. And we'll, people will see that next week as to, but yeah, that, that was really, um, really quite, quite well done. I think we'll, we we'll, should see some good results. Fingers crossed. Who knows? <clears throat> might, might die on his ass, might it? <laughs> That's with everything that we try. Yes. Mm. But we're here right. for the people. What have you been up to my friend? Um, Kind of, I think today I achieved what what is known commonly in the trade as the flow today. Oh, really? Yeah, you had a good day. In so much as um, time passed me by. No, so much so it was noted by my family that I didn't normally. I'd stop for lunch with the family, you see. And today I looked up at the clock and it was like quarter past one, and they were just about to go out. And thought I haven't eaten lunch yet. So it's one of those days that. I found myself in the zone. I was re um, rewriting, stroke redesigning, stroke um, reapplying my certified Scrum Master class on Miro. So that was part of the um, the tasks for this week. But I I've pretty much done it all in one day, largely through that that I that state of just getting it done, getting it done, getting it done. Hmm. Is that like crowded house four seasons in one day? Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, no, it's good. And um, I uh, unearthed um, one of our old exercises that you might have forgotten about. Oh yeah. Um, which I think will work quite well online. Which is offering the offsite customer. Offering the offsite customer. Do you remember that as a challenge? I remember, the title. I remember the title. It's basically remote shape drawing exercise. So oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I thought. I've um, managed to dig that one out and uh, dusted it off a bit. And I think I'll try that next week. Um, writing requirements in a distance, you know, a remote format. So you've got to write a set of requirements for, for to recreate a drawing and see how people interpret or maybe misinterpret those, those instructions. So that was good. I've um, thrown that one in there and a few other different things. Yeah, it should be, should be fun. So yeah, it's part of, Felt quite, you know, I just felt like I achieved something today. I didn't get out of the house, which was bad. So by the time five o'clock came along, I'd sort of been sat in a seat all day. 
So that made me a bit sad. But I managed to have a turn around the garden and water the plants. That was my exercise for today. Yeah. What plants have you got growing? <laughs> what have we got, Jeff? We can see out the window. Well, you can, but I actually can't at the moment. But um, oh, a wide range. We planted quite a lot of stuff, like new trees and things last yeah, year. Yeah, I don't really care, actually. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> people don't want to hear about plants move on <clears throat> yeah okay feedback okay what have you done wrong no 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 no. I've, <laughs> I've, been, I've been doing about feedback today oh right okay right i've been creating a video about feedback because okay. i'm doing um doing a team coaching session tomorrow okay for, for a team uh, and they wanted the topic of feedback Okay. So they want to get better at giving and receiving feedback. Uh, so I created a video on it, and they can practice giving me some feedback on that video. Oh. So they can give me some bad feedback, and they can give me some good feedback, and we can work out why it's good and why it's bad, and why it's difficult to to give feedback, why it's difficult to sometimes receive feedback, um, why it's important. Yeah. So it's going to be a a feedbacky day tomorrow. So quite meta feedback on the feedback set on the feedback video. Yeah. Did you put, did you deliberately put things in there that you think this will get some feedback, or was it you just? I don't need because I'm not excellent. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, I didn't really um, because it's just the first version. So every version, every first version is always going to need some feedback. Um, I, without blowing my own trumpet, that I'll always do some one little th good thing. And there'll always be some absolutely shocking things that I've done that need changing. So no, there'll be plenty of opportunities about me even trying. Yeah. How long's the video? Uh, 10 minutes actually. Okay. And it's just, is it talking Jeff? Is it, is it a no, it's an animated cartoon thing? Okay. Mm, it took me ages, but it'll be reusable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Excellent. So you sound quite busy. Busy, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, I am actually. I, did, I I had a list of about five things I wanted to get done today, and I think I've done two of them, which I don't feel good about. But yeah. but there you go. Um, not through want of trying, not through slacking. Mm. Just some days that happens. Some days you get in flow like you, and you, you're knocking them out all over the place. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> some days you don't. Yeah, some days you're dry as a bone. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, I yeah, I don't know what it was about today. Just um, I started. Yeah, I didn't start till like ten, maybe half past nine, ten. Um, but it just felt like it. I think it, I, a lot of it is with me is again about procrastinating. This is again something I I probably should have started. Or maybe should have been completed a week ago. A week ago, maybe, but that well, kind of procrastination streak in me just thinks, ah, oh, it can wait, it can wait, it can wait. But why would a week ago have been better? Huh? Why would a week ago have been better? Well, just because I could say it for the, I could say it was one less thing to have to do this week. Mm. Whereas now this week, I've already got looking at my backlog three, three or four fairly ch chunky things to do. So, you know, question, I know tonight, right now, I know well, for the benefit of the tape, it's like five to nine at night, but it's quite late anyway, but I'll be quite tired tonight. Not, that's not a bad thing, but I, if I was working now, I'd probably, be, I'd make a lot of mistakes. And I was just typing messages to my, um, someone earlier, one of my friends earlier, and I, I, I put in like three type, um, typos in it, which I think I would never have done that ordinarily. So I apologize for my bad spelling. Which is probably down to my tiredness now, but um, yeah, just uh, kind of part of me thinks maybe I hacked through it a little bit. There'll be something that comes up next week that I've done today that I think ah, I should have spent more time, or had I done, had I started it a week before, that wouldn't have, I'd have noticed that this week. Yeah, okay, that's my logic. Yeah, when do you need it, by? Well, last response, last, last responsible moment, Friday, I suppose. Okay. For a call on Monday. Yeah. So you've still, you've still got time. Yeah. 
but uh, yeah, that's um, one thing done today. One thing, one less thing to do tomorrow. <clears throat> My parents are coming to visit tomorrow. Really? In the garden, mm. as well, just to, to state first of all, illegally, they're going to be in the garden at two at a distance of two meters apart. How are they doing? They all right? Yeah, they're all right. I think. Yeah, they're um, probably, um, yeah, I think they're getting a bit bored. My dad, I think my dad's just venturing out everywhere just to get away from my mum. But um, even when he probably should stay at home more. But no, I think that, well, to be, to be fair, I shouldn't joke because their health is pretty good and they haven't had any scares. So they're, um, they're, they're pretty good. <clears throat> Would you say you're better at giving feedback than you were? How am I better at giving feedback than I was? I think, uh, yes, yes. In some circumstances. Um, lockdown is a good example of um, how that affects my ability to give feedback and probably receive feedback mm. in stressful family situations yep. recent times um and apology uh, just this evening uh, apologizing for my um for some of my actions and or how i was how i went about a certain conversation with my daughter so um probably not in yeah in professional circumstances i hope yes um, sometimes I str I've struggled in the last few weeks hmm. due to pressures at home. There is a difference, though, isn't there? there is, you can you can tackle things a lot more professionally at work than you can at home. Mm. I try, I, you know, I try to um, practice what I preach, though, which is uh, sometimes I get. I think I just get a bit either complacent, stroke lazy, stroke a bit. Um, Careless, I suppose. I hope. Well, yeah. I should be a bit more mindful of it. And are you better at receiving feedback than you were? I think so. I think probably I'm more aware. I'm again. This I think we had a conversation with this at, um, the, at the social distance in last week, but um, I can remember getting some feedback. In one of my first ever training courses, and I was, it, it was it was a real shock to hear at the time, and it was a real um, something that stuck with me almost ever since. And I can remember exactly what the feedback was, and it was probably because I was I was very nervous, stroke raw at the time about what I was doing. I think now that I'm a lot more confident and comfortable with what I do, um, I'm also. Not that I would ignore feedback, but I'm perhaps I'm just more used to hearing it and more used to knowing how I can deal with it rather than not knowing how to deal with it yeah. myself personally. Yeah. So if someone, uh, to, to, to give people the backgrounds, when I did one of my first ever CSM courses with Jeff, actually, um, outside of the comfort of my company at the time, which was British Telecom, one of the, the guys um, at the end of the course, actually, if you'd done it at the start, it wouldn't perhaps... Well, it might have completely um, derailed me, but he said at the end of the course, um, "Paul, just you know what? Um, just to just to just to lay it out straight, he says you you say you know all the time, you know, you know, you know, you know." And um, it obviously irritated this guy, and he said you know, and the words he said was "you not." Was he said was it you know was uh, okay? It might have been okay. You say okay all the time. You're not Tony Montana, okay? Okay. He just kept, and that those words, Tony Montana, which obviously for Jeff's benefit is from the film Scarface. Um, I thought it was an American footballer. <laughs> that's Joe Montana. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> um, no, it was, um, that's just, that's resonated with me. And I suppose I don't check myself now when I'm doing it, but it's that kind of feedback at the time that really hit home for me. And I was probably very careful for the next few courses on how much I used it. How much you I said. What you, can you remember what went through your mind when you were processing that? 
I think it was just um, inferiority. It was just about, um, I suppose, imposter syndrome, um, a little bit of nerve, people um, seeing how nervous I was. Okay. Um, exposing a vulnerability or a habit or a deficiency that I, I didn't want people to, even though I probably was unaware of it, it was the fact that someone's noticed something that, that, that I do that irritates them. That's quite, that's, that hurts. That's, um, that's obviously pissed them off, but equally it's a, a slur on my ability as a trainer at the time. So I did take it personally. Mm. You know, that's something that I've done, which has upset you. And I'm a massive people pleaser. I don't like upsetting anyone. So, yeah. So you, you'd assumed that you'd upset him and you'd taken it personally, not just about your ability as a, as a trainer, but you. And I, 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 I'd be surprised if he was upset. No, I, looking back now, I don't think he was. I think he was He was just a very... Um, the way he gave the feedback was quite vigorous, was quite... Um, what's the words? Not aggressive, but certainly uh, up... What's, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like kind of fast and not flippant, but... Direct, assertive. Yeah. yeah. Assertive, yes, no, yeah, assertive is probably a better word. It wasn't aggressive, it was just quite direct and very, you do this. He, I can't remember what nationality he was, but yeah, it, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, I certainly wasn't a British, he wasn't a British um, member of the course, but very much direct to the point, almost a little bit um, a, a mockery, okay. which probably upset me a little bit more, a little bit, and I don't think it was intentional, but there was a, trying to, perhaps make light of it, but in a direct and um, slightly mocking way. Yeah. And for me as a, as a junior nervous first time I've been outside the, the comfort of, of BT, that was all a bit too scary. Mm. And that's, I think, you know, that's one of the things that I was pulling out today in this topic around feedback is that the, the for me, the one, the biggest barrier with regards to feedback is how much we personalize things. Now, personalizing it is good because I don't just want to give you some bland feedback. I actually want to give you something that's actionable for you and meaningful for you and specific to you. Mm. But equally, it's not about you as a person. It's just your behavior, your action rather than your person, your, your character. And we do, we do tend to, overanalyze we do take things personally it damages our ego um and we know that when we're giving people feedback so we don't want to upset them but really what we're trying to do is we're trying to save ourselves because we don't want that feeling of having upset somebody mm. then <clears throat> once we can get past that it's really useful um i was, I always find it interesting that Generally speaking, the, the the more successful people prefer what you you would say in inverted commas is negative feedback. They, rather than positive, you're doing well, you're doing well. They they want to know how to get better. Mm. Um, whereas people who are much more insecure want reassurance. So when when someone gives you some feedback now at the end of a class, what goes through your head differently? Um, I think so again, recently this, um, thinking back to one of the first classes I did in, um, lockdown. So I'm very much learning how to structure stroke time box stroke, facilitate a two day online class. Yeah. And the feedback was indirect, but it was via a chat. It was via a chat window. And someone said, um, these sessions are too long. Can we take, can we take more breaks? It was something like that around the length of the sessions that, yeah. and I think that I still, I still had the initial reaction of, 
I wouldn't say panic, but certainly um, increase stress, probably because that's a, a, a slightly more uncertain environment. I'm not used to online training, yada, yada, yada. But certainly the time it took me to rationalize, it was a lot less. Yeah. So I was able to more methodically say, okay, so that's fair enough and accept it, but then say, what's the, it's not about me. Not, I didn't, I probably didn't think about this at the time, but how could, as it's fairly easy, it's easy to remedy that. That's yeah. something that it's, it's not, it's a different type of feedback, I suppose. It's not about me talking too much. It's just about the fact that the actual session itself is, is too long. So I think I reacted um, and didn't dwell on it. Probably um, I reacted a lot quicker and adjusted things a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of an example where someone's given me direct feedback. No, uh, it might come to me in a minute, but again, we tend to dwell on, yeah, when you think of feedback, we tend to dwell on negatives, but we've had quite a lot of, um, say we, um, I think it was, someone gave us feedback, didn't they? It was during, maybe it was during the um, Lean Agile Brighton thing. I think it was just um, Eddie at the start of the, the start of the talk just said, um, thank you for continuing to put out stuff, content yeah. during lockdown. And I'd never stopped to think about that. And I thought, you know, well, that's just quite, that's quite nice. That, and that, um, it's nice to hear that, mm. that, um, you know, with, we're doing a good thing. We're doing the right thing or, you know, we're keeping people entertained. We're certainly keeping Eddie entertained yeah. or um, keeping him, uh, keeping his walk to work or whatever it might be as his daily, daily walk a bit more uh, thought provoking. Mm. And things like that, it's, it's, um, it does make you feel positive feedback, kind of reassurance. That, and I suppose that's part, partly looking at me as well. Yeah. But I think particularly at this time, when we don't, I think we've said this before during lockdown is when you don't feel like you are in an environment where you can get a lot of positive feedback, every little f- bit of feedback that you get, you've got to take, take notice of mm. and, um, and take stock of. Yeah. And not all feedback is useful. I mean, it's all subjective at the end of the day, you know, it's some, it's one person's opinion perspective. It's not fact. And, I know people that take feedback too quickly and some people who completely ignore it. Like I've um, the, one of the mouse. So this is a good example. I'll try and find it word for word. Where would I find it? Keep, keep talking. But there was a, there's a classic piece. This is a, so I'll give you an example of a piece of feedback I had that I immediately discounted. Yeah. And I'll explain why, but you keep talking. I'll try and find it in the in this if I can. It's probably well, buried most, in my somewhere. Most people are giving you feedback with positive intent yeah. because they want you to be successful. They, and it's and it's hard for them. Not most people find giving feedback difficult, as we we we're talking about already. So my first reaction is it actually took them quite a bit of courage to give me some feedback. Um, so even if I actually, when I, when I, re- when I reflect on it, think, mm, do you know what? I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to choose to reject that piece of feedback as invalid. I would still appreciate the time and the effort that they put into providing me their perspective. Cause at least it's got me to think about something. Um, of course there are some people sometimes who have an agenda to their feedback. Um, and so it's worth critiquing, as they say, the credibility of the witness before uh, before just blindly incorporating their feedback into your new world view or your new view of self. That's, that's as much as a monologue. <laughs> I know, I know. I You're doing very well. You're doing very well. <clears throat> I'm I think a, a listener and a talker, ladies and gentlemen. I think I'm a lover and a fighter. Hang on a minute. I think I found the course. Was it with me? No, it was on my own. 
I did um, some interesting stats, actually. I'll give you two more stats that I found um, that I always remember. One was from the Harvard Business Review, but I couldn't tell you what year. It, was some, it wasn't that long ago. But basically, said the, the, if, you're a, if you're a leader, a manager, somebody, the more you listen, the more effective people think your feedback is or the, or the, or the, yeah, the better people that think you are at giving feedback. So it's not so much about what you say, it's how much you listen. Uh, and I think the, the, the lesson there is the more you listen, the more rapport you get, therefore the more respect they have in your opinion um, and the more it means something to them. And the other was that there's a, there's a big correlation between leadership effectiveness and the amount of feedback that those leaders ask for. Right. The more feedback you ask for as a leader, the more effective you are likely to be as a leader. Yeah. No, I can believe that. And those are two, I think, really quite important, important things. So the bad news is I can't find it, but um, the good news is I can largely remember it. Um, so it was one of my, it was a public course in Bristol um, and I changed rooms and the room wasn't great. Um, it was quite small and I think there was about, let's say 16 people in the room and they were on two tables and it was a bit of a squeeze, eight people per table. Yeah. Um, we do some introductions. Um, I, I believe, um, I got someone's name wrong or I, I mispronounced the name It's it's an American lady and I've mispronounced her name. Um, and then largely this lady stayed silent for the whole course and, and pretty much didn't say anything and didn't really contribute. And only when I got the feedback, so I did some written feedback at the end by a question there. Um, and uh, the thing I remember was, uh, it's, one of the questions is on, on the questionnaire, uh, what's the most valuable part of the course and what's the least valuable aspects of the course? And then on the question that what's the least valuable as aspect, she said, the trainer. <laughs> Just that was it, just the trainer. So um, obviously I'd said something or obviously I've done something which didn't. I th I, there were some other comments in there. You can obviously trace it back because they're where that they match up with other questions that she's answered along the way. And there was some, there was obviously some, some unhappiness about what I taught or how I taught it. I think it might have been to do with getting a name wrong, but but that's just my uh, my intuition. But And that's something that when I read it, my immediate response was, um, I suppose I'm going to say I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds like, um, like, like, a, really? Like, like, are you serious? Is, I mean, it, who, who writes that? It's like, I mean, come on, give me something a bit more than that. It's like, um, it just seemed almost too comical to be playground, to be, to be, to be real, to be, to be valid. Yeah, um, and that there probably you. was more. There was more up behind it, and there was ob obviously something that I didn't. Might as well have written your mother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like um, either someone was just going for the gag, or um, it was a genuine piece of feedback that I, I just laughed at, and I didn't. I and is that is that a valid? Thing? Should you discount feedback? Or is all feedback valid? Because in that case, I don't think it is. No, no, no. I I, I wouldn't say all feedback is valid, and. The fact that it wasn't very specific means yeah. it's not very useful to you. So it's, it's got to be useful. Um, I would also suggest that it probably wasn't um, it wasn't very mindful feedback either. It was probably written at a time where her emotions were still a little bit raw. Yeah. Had, had there been a follow up conversation, maybe you'd have found out a little bit more if you'd have been interested. Um, but no, there it would be. You know, there would be a part of me, I think, that would probably be curious to find out what it was. But there would also be a part of me, I'd have to admit, that would rather stay oblivious. Mm. Um, because sometimes once you're aware of something, you've either got to fix it or you're now aware of something that you can't do mm. or can't fix. Um, and that can be that can be that can dent your confidence and, and lead to all sorts of um, sort of confidence crises, can't it? But mm. Um, no, it's not. It's got, it's got to be a relatively safe environment to have good feedback. And I think there's, if you don't, 
respect the opinion of the person giving you the feedback, then it's pointless. Um, pointless asking for it. But then, of course, not all feedback is asked for. Sometimes, sometimes feedback is foisted upon you, whether you wish it or not. Mm. There's a time, time that we used to do a section, didn't we, in our the early iterations of our advanced course about feedback traps. Yeah. yeah. And I think timing is um, is a is a really in, essential part of of knowing when, not just how and what, but when. Mm. Timing of feedback is um, if it's too raw, if it's too soon, if it's too, it, or if it if it's too late, can't be acted on that type of thing. But generally, um, I think we talked about this before. But the idea of sleeping on it, 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 it just to letting before there might be an opportunity. I'm not saying in every situation you should sleep on it, but sleeping on the problem or sleeping on the the process or the the thought, the conversation, the the reaction might change how you deal with it it might do it might it might do for the better it might do for the worse um i think it's uncomfortable but in general unless it's extreme i think the sooner the better the closer well what i mean by that is the closer the feedback to the actual event the more useful the feedback is because you're relying less on memory Mm. um and our memories are notoriously bad, not just mine, but humans. We, we, we generally remember the last, rem, we don't remember the thing, we remember the last memory of it. So mm. um, that that's, that's a flaw. But if your emotions are too high, then you have tunnel vision. You're, you're in your fight flight response rather than being able yeah. to rationalize about something. So it is a balancing act. It is finding the sweet spot, but in general, once, as long as emotions aren't high, the sooner the better. And there are tools and techniques for bringing emotions mm. down. There's a nice phrase. Um, Paul Z. Jackson used this. This is way back when I was, um, I think just before I started writing my books, this is probably 2017. And I can't, I, from, from which my memory is better, but I can't remember the exact phrase he used. But some, we were talking about feedback. We were talking about um, giving and receiving feedback. And he said... Um, Something like, as he referenced the phrase, the feedback vacuum. Where there's a feedback vacuum, it makes feedback much harder anyway. Mm. So just having a huge gap between feedback makes it harder to have to either give or receive feedback the next time. So small, little bits, even trivial feedback can increase that the chances of you being able to cope and um cope with it and cope um cope with giving it better mm. next time i probably shouldn't but um <laughs> but you will yeah how how you respond to something has a massive impact so yesterday was the weekend and i was doing some sanding in the garden <laughs> with an electric sander. Yeah. Now, a little bit like you, I was in the state of flow and didn't realize that it was eight o'clock, which is probably a bit late to be using an electric tool. Kids going to bed. Yeah. Um, so my wife came out and said, you should probably stop now. I said, oh yeah, fair enough. I'll stop now. As we decided that our doorbell rang. Yeah. And where I was, I couldn't get to the front door in time, but my son did. Right. And one of our neighbors came around and was swearing at my son about the, the noise. Really? Um, very aggressively. My boy's 13. He wasn't doing anything about it. He didn't know anything about it. Well, he knew it was going on, but it was nothing to do with him. Yeah. And we've got a video in our, in our um, doorbell so we, I could play it back, but I couldn't see who it was. I couldn't tell who, which neighbor it was to go. With right. It speak to yeah but the the point of me telling you this is had he come around and said do you know what it's a bit late it's a bit noisy i would have been embarrassed and i just said yeah i just realized that it's eight o'clock that's my bad yeah i'll probably say, have a bottle of wine or something like this so, sorry mm. but the fact that he came around and had a go at my son without wanting to speak to me about it, 
it made me want to go back out and start sanding again. Yeah. And I know that's not a good thing. Why do you think that was? What, what, what was it? Was it the family? Was it the fact that, because I've spoken about this before, that family has an interesting effect on me and my, perhaps my rational side. And my, mm. <laughs> is that, was it, was it the fact that he'd, or he or she had mouthed off that your son or was it, was it? Yeah, I think so. I think, it, day, was it? I think it was, I think it was a, an overreaction as well. I think it was, it was, um, it's not like I've been doing it for a, for a long time. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I actually have the right to do. Uh, so it's not like I'm having a, a late night party. No. Against local regulations. Uh, so yeah, I felt it was an overreaction, um, and something that could have been dealt with a lot more calmly, mm. rationally. And I think mm. that response was more likely to lead to escalation than, and that's even with a, a relatively rational mind on, I would probably mm. have escalated it again even further. Yeah, and we've spoken about this, I think, on a podcast a while ago my um run in with a group of rather drunken um lads i won't say lads because they they weren't young but uh, men on a um on the eurostar we talked about it, until we talked about this but um that was a situation where i was not going to go back because i confronted it very early so i gave the feedback and i this is a conscious decision I need to do this at about the time that I need to do this, give this feedback now, as soon as I get on the train. Uh, literally, it was while we were putting our bags in the overhead lock, I said, I've got to, I'm going to tell you this now, gents, while you're all sober. Um, and you can hear me in a, in a rational, non-aggressive voice that if this, we're going to have a, my, and my family are going to have an issue with this, if the, if not so much if the volume, but if the language becomes um, um, unsightly. So, as it happened, it did. Things got worse. These these guys got more drunk, and the language did get worse. So we just we distanced ourselves. I and then it would have, if I'd gone back, and reiterated my point. I think it. I think I don't know this, but I think it would have got a lot worse for me, and for my family had I gone back and 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 repeated, probably in a slightly more antagonistic way, what I, what I said earlier on. Yeah. Takes so, a very yeah. mindful, um, takes a very mindful state to to be able to to give emotional feedback calmly mm. without escalating it. Um, I think that could be so. Back to the agile thing, that could be true of teams though. If you feel a strong enough bond to one of your team members or a team member that you feel um, is being hurt or is being in some way. Um, you definitely see a circling the wagons type, you know, siege mentality yeah. type of approach, don't you? Yeah. So, but that again, that can that can backfire, and that, and that can that can actually be trying to represent someone, even when you know when you don't really know all the facts, can be quite inflammatory as well. If you don't know, if you're trying to give feedback on someone else's behalf, it becomes hearsay. It becomes you said this, you know, did, you know, did you say that? Or, and then you you get into kind of playground arguing and that type of thing, which is uh, which is never good, but. It is um it's all yeah, it's a it's a minefield, isn't it? Mm. Feedback minefield. But important. Important. Mm. Right. Yes, that's too much heavy thinking for me for one night. Right, that's well. A busy day. Yes. Sleep well, my friend. Will do. And um well we'll see see um speak next week when we've got some scrum yeah. master challenges to to review. Looking forward to that. Chin, chin. Yeah, cheers. Ta-da.